Washington. And I do want to bring in, though, now New York City public advocate Jamani Williams and the policy director of criminal justice and civil liberties at the R Street Institute, Jillian Snyder, who's also a retired NYPD officer. It's good to have both of you with us this morning. So, Jamani, you've called. You want charges to be brought immediately. You put out a lengthy statement here. Mayor Adams is saying the investigation needs to be allowed to proceed first. We saw some of those protests. What do you say to Mayor Adams this morning? Well, so first, the baseline that we know, uh, there was a homeless man uh, that uh, was talking about his needs. He was choked to death. That is what's happened. Um, I do agree about an investigation. Mm -hmm. I think that should start with charges. Uh, lots of things can happen after the charges. But when you have a man who was killed on video by another man, uh, there should be charges that are put out there. And I think it's because who was killed that hasn't happened. I also am concerned that we have a mayor that has yet to say that vigilantism is not what we want. I'm also concerned that we have a governor that hasn't made those type of statements, even previously saying she's making laws around bail based on what she sees on the paper, not on what's actually happening. So I'm concerned that our executives are creating an environment where these things can continue. As a former New York Police Department officer, how do you see it when it comes to this subject of vigilantism and people stepping in uh, in a situation like what we saw here? I don't know if I would call it vigilantism. Again, I wasn't on the subway. We're still learning as things unfold. I don't know what the perception of fear of the individuals who were in the subway car was. I do not know what the individuals who held Mr. Neely down, I don't know what they were thinking. So again, I don't want to call it vigilantism. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was an attempt to subdue someone who, yes, was mentally ill, was homeless, who was definitely displaying that he needed stuff and he wasn't getting what he needed. So I think we really need to see how this pans out. There's also this larger conversation, right? We've been talking here in New York City. There's been so much talk about, is it safe on the subway? Is it not? You know, I did some digging into this last year. And when you look at the statistics, the statistics are one thing, but it's how people feel. And there was this effort. We're going to, uh, we're going to tackle mental health. We're going to put more officers down there in the subway stations to help work on mental health. Not a lot has happened since then. Is there any sense that you're seeing that things are changing in terms of not only how people experiencing a mental health crisis or homelessness are being treated and helped in the city, but also how the residents of New York City are addressing it? Because that's part of it, too. So Jordan Neely would have been failed in the city and the state and how we do uh, 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 mental health now, mm -hmm. just as he was failed the previous years. I do want to make clear that you can say vigilantism shouldn't be happening while saying you're not sure what happened here. Both of those things can happen at the same time, and we need to hear that. But I also want to be clear, um, someone assisting law enforcement has always happened. That's always happened. Mm -hmm. Here we have someone that, by some accounts, wasn't just holding someone down. They had them in a chokehold for 15 minutes. Jordan Neely was choked to death. That's what happened. And we should call out his name, and I want to respect his humanity. Mm -hmm. We also, I just passed a bill thanks to the city council uh, called the Homelessness uh, Bill of Rights. What we didn't put in there is the right not to be choked to death uh, on a subway car because we didn't think we had to. We want to make sure that people's humanities are respected yeah. and that we're saying things that don't cause the type of vigilantism that we don't want to see. And one thing to note is that the person who did this, who has been questioned and was released, is a former Marine. John Miller, our chief national or law enforcement analyst, was saying yesterday that a chokehold like this is part of their training, of course, in a very different scenario. But he also reported <clears throat> that Neely, which obviously this Marine would not have known this, had 42 arrests and also had been three assaults between 2019 and 2021 on the subway for unprovoked attacks in the subway on females. How does that factor into how this is viewed? It shouldn't, because at the time of the incident, no one knew Mr. Neely's background. No right. one knew he had any kind of criminal history. Again, we could speculate now, oh, he, you know, had issues. He had 42 arrests. He was charged with assault on the subway system. But again, that's all after the fact. So I don't think that should be weighed in right now. And one other thing, do you, what do you make of what we just learned that Thomas Kediff, who ran against Alvin Bragg for the, in the latest district attorney election, is now representing this former Marine. Do you read anything into that? I think that he does need representation because, as public advocate William said, <clears throat> charges may be brought. Um, the DA's office and the New York City Police Department are very active in their investigation. They're seeking witnesses. They're seeking people to provide video surveillance. I know there's very limited footage from what we know now, but in order for them to bring charges, and we have to remember, charges may not have been brought because of New York State's discovery law. Once the DA files charges, they have to then arraign and subsequently 
indict this individual very quickly um, because they do have the right to a speedy trial. So I've speculated that that might be why they have not brought any charges yet. But the, the, and that may be true. That the, I always think about the same set of circumstances and switch it. What if it was the black homeless man who had choked to death a white Marine because he was scared? We'd probably be having this conversation with him with charges sitting on Rikers Island. And so we want to make sure that the laws are being applied properly. We also want to make sure that we are continuing to respect the humanity of homeless people who are, have mental health issues like Jordan Neely. We have a, a situation where that is not what is what's happening. We're spending more time feeding the fear. As you mentioned, uh, the statistics bear something else out. But you want people to be safe and feel safe. And yeah. if you're not feeling safe, that is a real thing that we have to address. But we have to say you cannot choke people to death yeah. on the train. And that doesn't seem to be coming from our top executive leaders, and that's very concerning to me. Yeah, it's such an important conversation. I'm really glad that both of you were able to be here this morning. We'll obviously continue to follow it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jillian. Thank you, Jamani. Thank you.